justice to, to describing it. It would make sense, it would make people laugh, but it's really not about being foolish. It is a case of, like I said, it's as if there's a part of people's brains that believes, that loves lies, that is programmed to, to make lie make sense. Amen. I call it the lie center of the human brain. But I think it's a whole lot easier many times for some people when that's why please don't be one of the conspiracy theorists. It will ruin you. I know what I'm saying. When you feel like there is something, there must be something he's doing. There's nothing he's doing. <laughs> I'm going to somebody. Of course, I wouldn't believe those nonsense because I, I was persuaded about Sister Judy. There are some things you may hear tomorrow about me. Guess what? From where? Not from people, from your head. Before you are going to people, it will start from your head. People will talk. But do you know that if you are not persuaded here, Or put better, if you are persuaded here, you cannot be unpersuaded outside. It starts from inside. How do you think? For as he thinketh, so is he. When somebody comes and shows up tomorrow, which is, which is priestly regalia, very nicely dressed. Maybe they came with probably maybe a, a convoy of seven or eight cars. And then they just went, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, these ones are big people in the city. And they come around. And Jesus is preaching to only 12 people in his church. <laughs> Amen. It takes persuasion for 12 people to follow a man. It takes what? For 12 people to follow him, follow a man. Are you persuaded? Now the ministry of Jesus Christ, Christianity is global. A lot of people want to join it now. But Jesus knows the most persuaded people were those who were with him when he started. These ones that are joining, they are joining because they see others. They are just following. But they were those who knew him when he had nothing. And he said, I'll follow you. My question is, Jesus Christ, so, so they walk in with their royal regalia and they begin to say he's doing those healings he's doing and those miracles he's doing. He's using Beelzebub power. He's using demonic power. I was speaking with the, um, the um, elders from um, Tenopia. Uh, the day they were leaving yesterday. And I said the following words. I said, when it was when we were talking about the accidents or the two cases of near accidents, you know, that are happening. And I said, I said, please drive, drive well. Hmm? Drive safely. No need to be rushing somewhere. Better to arrive than to not arrive. And I said, I said the following words to him. I said, I said, do you know that that accident you both had, who are going on ministry work in Tonitsi. Do you know if it happened that there was any loss of life? Eh? The next thing you will hear is that the pastor has used them for blood money. <laughs> Ritual. I'm telling you. Conspiracy theories. They have answer for everything. Especially now that we say it's a year for millions. (laughs) 
I'm telling you. And someone will tell you he saw me when he was in it. He was close to the window one day in the hostel. I was making incantation. I knew I saw it. There was something. There was a way his eyes was, became red when he turned and looked around. It will shock you where these, these, these things will suddenly start rising from. And so I was like, hey, hey, I, I, I was feeling it in my heart. Oh. I was feeling it, but you know, you know, conspiracy theories. You, it takes persuasion. You have to be persuaded so that when things happen, you are not moved. What makes a man, you know, you have a full story building. I mean, I mean, at your level of ministry and knowledge, it's expected that nothing, I mean, you should know better. And then you're building a hotel of how many floors? Bam, one day, it collapses. Several people dead in it. What makes people still follow you? When everybody else say, it's a ritual. It's now you need ritual. When you started ministry, you didn't need ritual. You see what I'm saying? I wouldn't want to call it foolishness, but it's, it's something in people's brains. When you were in the village, you didn't need that much ritual. Why is it now that the world already knows you that you need ritual? Common sense. Tap your neighbor and say, common sense. Common it's sense. needed. I want to plead with you. If you need to pray to get convinced, pray. But believe me, loyalty is difficult or nearly impossible when you are not persuaded. I remember Fedro, during those times when they were trying to get her off of our church and then said all sorts of things and all sorts of accusations, she was confused. She said she would cry and cry and cry those days. It took, and that's why I said, in those days, of course, it's just recently I started speaking about some of those things. But I said nothing. I was quiet, absolutely quiet. And that's even more dangerous because when you're not saying anything, you don't give the people anything to work with. Well, there's only one sided thing. I leave you between you and God. If God doesn't convince you, go. And so one of those days, she, she, she began to tell me some, some time later that she was. She decided to fast. She decided to have a three-day fast. When she was confused and was about leaving the church, she decided to fast. And I'm like, Fedri, you fasted? She said, yeah. I said, okay, nice. Amen. So I think she said it was on her first, uh, I think it was the first day she had a dream. And in the dream, she saw a certain man ministering. And there were several people, so many people around there. She was, the person was, she said, but she got up from that dream she didn't see the person's face. I told you that time everybody was dreaming. <laughs> some were dreaming this, some were dreaming that. Everybody dream your own. So she was still fasting. I think it was around the third day that she dreamed. And then she said, as she said, saw the same dream, literally the same thing, everything. And then she saw my face. And that was what convinced her to stay in the ministry. Till she graduated. I can't convince you. I'm not planning to. In fact, there were days when I used to actually intentionally unconvince. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Please, be convinced about where you are. When you are convinced, you make work easy for your manager. You make work easy for your department head. You make work easy for the church. They don't have to follow you up anymore. You know, don't be in a church and, you know, you're like, you're not a member. You know the kind of people you ask them, you, which church do you go to? I visit every church, <laughs> you know. I, I go to every church, you know, like, you, you, you make up your mind. That's what loyalty is. Loyalty is staying on one thing, doing one thing, making up your mind, trusted and committed so that you can be given more. Nobody wants to give more to someone who, you know, his mind is not there. Nobody. It's the same thing, please. Let me now bring it to God. You don't want to be serving the devil and serving God. The devil can't trust you. God can't trust you too. 
I'm going to know somebody. Do you see why, why some people, there are some people who, and I mean from the kingdom of darkness, who can literally, literally, literally do anything you can see a man of God doing. They can look at you and tell you your name. Tell you your father's place. Tell, they can prophesy. And they'll tell you, and it's devil power I'm using. They are committed, sold out, and loyal to the devil. The way you shout in the name of Jesus, you shout in the name of Lucifer. <laughs> power! You see, you put on the ground, you, you know that the thing works. You, they shout Lucifer. I want to know somebody. They are dedicated. That's why he says, he says, he says, he says, I, I don't like it when you're lukewarm. He said, be either hot or be what cold. But don't be lukewarm. Tell me, but don't be lukewarm. Make up your mind. Everything we teach you, like I was saying during the crossover service, even though it may seem as if it is church-related, believe me, if you imbibe it, you suddenly find out it affects every area of your life. I was talking with a counselor and a sister the other day. I said, she's about to get married. I said, I said, tell me, what is the number one thing you want the most in a man? If you had to choose one thing, what is that one thing? I knew already what she would say. Firstly, I know her. Then I know the person involved. I said, what's that thing? She said, uh, I need a man who is committed to me. She says, fidelity. Infidelity. I can't handle that. I said. I said, there's one thing I can tell you about this man. Huh? It may not be many things you want, but this one thing now that you're looking for is one thing I can tell you 100% you have. I said, don't make your decisions based on minor requirements. There's something else you are looking for, which is the minor one. The major one is where you should make your decisions. On. This is something now he can give you without stress. Commitment. Hallelujah. Are you committed? See why? If you're committed to God, really, and you're not being dramatic and playing, you find out at work you'll be a committed person too. This is why people will envy you because they cannot understand how is it that, you know, she's being promoted. Check her, she's committed. You get to a place newly after some time. Your boss is already promoting you. He's already giving you some privileges. People will begin to envy you. But check it out. You have been trained somewhere. Persuasion. And commitment. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. May God help you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take point number two. Lesson number two. Are you learning something? Your loyalty must be to the higher authority. That's number two. Lesson number two. Your loyalty must be to what? Amen. Your loyalty must be to who? Why are we teaching these things to help you so that when you find yourself in situations, you can know what to do? So, um, my God, sometimes I can't do it. I think I have a dramatic center of my brain. Amen. 
I was about to add some drama here now. Praise the Lord. Uh, here, is, here, is, here, is, here is Joseph, cute, handsome guy. And um, one day, a certain pretty lady is coming close to her. Him, and uh, next thing is she touching him. And she's just sweet talking him. And she's just um, getting too close for comfort. And he's wondering what is happening to me. And he tried to check, is she drunk? But she doesn't look drunk. Her mouth is not smelling alcohol. And she seems to know what she's doing. And then she uttered those words which would cripple the knees of many men. The dream of many guys in the house, probably the words she has told others which um, they fell into. And she, she being the queenly lady that she is, she doesn't have to say too much for you to understand what she's trying to say. Three words are good enough, and she says, lie with me. Any of those words can make you go under the power. They are coming from someone so anointed. But she's surprised because unlike all the others she has said it to, he's not moved. And his reason he's not moved, I'm talking about loyalty. Loyalty is not only when you are seen. Loyalty is when, and even more important, when you are in secret. Loyalty is not only when you are seen. True loyalty is known when you are in secret. What do you do? What do you say? And he says, God forbid that I should do such a thing. She was surprised why for the first time uh, sweet words were not working. She's talking to a man who is persuaded. But not just that. He's a man under authority. And he makes reference to, he says, I have authority over everything in this house, but you, that's a no-go area. To anybody, it's a no-go area. Your submission must be to the highest authority. To the highest authority. Because there will be those who will come around to seduce you with words. To tell you things. I give an example of what happened in the ministry. You know, guys going around, you know, you know they had a cell meeting there. And in the cell meeting, they were cooking up their things and doing their things. I think it wasn't long ago even, I think it was earlier this year that uh, uh, Dr. Mary even mentioned to me that you know, some of these things were already happening even, even in the choir those days. They would say some things about the, in the choir, in the choir head about the church on your way to practice and away from practice. Some of them were already doing their things and talking and talking and saying all sorts of things before it finally blew up. They will try to convince you. Your submission should be to the highest authority. Your, your commitment should be to the highest authority. Let me say this. In a hierarchical setup, it is not disobedience. Huh? In fact, it is wrong for you. I'm coming to that's a different one. It is wrong for you to have an information that is relevant and helpful. And because of your loyalty or commitment to a lesser authority, you withhold it. And that is why in some places, you know, some people will say snitch, snitch. No, you are not a snitch. Huh? If 
your information is going to save the entire nation. Do you know why God took Rahab very seriously? Rahab. Because she knew the higher authority. I remember one of the days, a certain daughter came to me and she was going to tell me some very sensitive information, very important and sensitive information. She came to me and she was going to tell me and she was like, she doesn't know whether she should tell me this. And I told her, I said, because she doesn't want to seem like she's in a, she's in a turn between two. She doesn't want to seem like she is giving away her friend because this person is her friend. But she also knows that she has been in this ministry and she has heard me say, if your friend is going through issues and you are not talking about it and you say you are covering it, you are part of it. And that is why in scriptures, every time people who, even in the law, physical, in the law, if you are in, I mean in the, in the human, human realm, if you hate and abet a thief, you are treated as a thief also. So the penalties apply not only to the thief that was caught handed, but to the person who supported or hid the information. This is already disloyalty. Where folks are doing things underground. And then you hide it. You cover it. It will catch up. So she came to me and she was going to tell me. And I told her, I said, firstly, um, <clears throat> I said, I can tell you 100% what you're about to tell me. I already know it. What's your Someone else she's talking to. Hallelujah. After service. <laughs> it's amazing because, uh, I, I, let me say this, let me say it, let me say this with every humility. It's not everything God reveals to me spiritually. Some things he reveals to me physically. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. For some strange reason, God may just tell you, tell me, go out. And I'm just walking and I walk close to my window. From my window I see. Okay. I'll stand upon my watch <laughs> and hear what the Lord has to say to me. Do not think that because you cannot see someone does means this person cannot see you. You understand me? Do not think that because you cannot see someone means the person cannot see you. It's an error in human thinking. It is what I call pain avoidance blindness. We would rather think that we are not seen by anyone than confront the fact that you are being seen. I said that to say, Also that it's not everything we can see or hear or know of. Even as a pastor, there is no pastor, there's no man of God who knows or senses or sees everything. He will get the light, but many times, sometimes it may not be so clear, but you, it's later on it's like, ah, yeah, God was trying to say that to me, but I didn't really get it. It brought my attention to it, but then it escaped. For a ministry to succeed and move. That's why the first criteria is persuasion. Because when you are persuaded, huh? when you are persuaded about something, when you see things going on that are trying to pull it down, you don't keep quiet. 
But if you are not persuaded, it is easy for you to let things run. Am I talking to somebody? That is why, actually, we try to get some of you involved in some things. So imagine right now, for example, um, many, several of you who join in the putting of these wallpapers. So tomorrow, let's say you come and you see us in a chip pulling it all. Something inside of you would speak up. In fact, before you see him going there to pull it off, you say, oh, see, please leave it alone. You take him away. Because you remember the efforts you put in. You're persuaded about it. But there is another person who did nothing about it. He doesn't know how he came here, how he got here. Nothing is involved. None of the person's things is here. OC can be there pulling it off and he'll go and join OC and pull it. <laughs> Help him. Say, OC, do this side, do this side, do this side. <laughs> Are you understanding me? That's the power of belonging. That's why we want you to belong. Be in. Don't be one leg in and one leg out. Because if you are one leg in and one leg out, it is you the devil will use. I, I don't know if you're getting me. That's why, if you remember the phases, so what, what the devil is going to do is, remember the phases we looked at, the stages of this loyalty. You know, firstly, the first thing is a committed member, then the person becomes a passive mem a passive pass state of passivity. Then the person, before the person begins to become public, critical stage. Then the person gets um, to full blown stage. How did he get there? He first has to pull away. Before people destroy something, they will get out of the boat. When they want to destroy something, they will get out. Get some others who are political with them. Political stage, get some people. So now let's sink this boat. Hallelujah. Amen. What stage is that? Or what, what, what um, lesson was that? <clears throat> In 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, let's take one scripture as we can close. It says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. So the man of God uses this to buttress the fact that Paul was saying, in other words, Paul was saying, follow me only as long as I follow Christ. The day I stop following Christ is the day you must stop following me. Your loyalty in this case is to the higher authority, that is Christ. I am convinced that many people do not understand this principle. So there's a hierarchy also in the kingdom. Christ, Jesus. Amen. Okay, I've seen some cases. Uh, some of you might not have seen, but I've seen some cases. Okay, I'll say this very humbly. One of the daughters, she's young. She was growing in the things of God, right? So I had to correct her. So she came to me one day, and she's like, she had gotten a powerful revelation. Now I'm like, okay, let me hear it. I'm expecting to hear something powerful. And so she's saying something like, you know, like, um, she's, right now, she's feeling the love of God, like the love of God is so strong. I'm like, yeah, that's beautiful. That She's beginning to understand how much God loves her. And I'm like, yeah, that's beautiful. That's true. And then she's like, you know, like, she even knows that Jesus, that God loves her more than Jesus. <laughs> and I'm like, go on. <laughs> You know, like, go on, like, okay. Like, you know, like, Jesus Christ, that God gave up Jesus Christ to die for her. Because God loves her so much. I'm like, um, not exactly like that, you know. <laughs> Amen. And, and, of course, I go home to correct her when she learns. But there are times where people have seen things. A spirit appeared to them. They saw a vision. A spirit told them something. I am God. Do not worship any other God. Don't mention the name Jesus. Don't mention Holy Spirit. I am the real God. And I'm always here with you. Amen. 
você entender, Deus.